because you always have to have Indiana Jones find something weird. And this one was basically a time machine. Yeah, it was a time machine. <laughs> the dial of destiny. No Infinity Stones. But, yeah. I mean, he was... But, yeah. I mean, yep, they went through right in the butthole in the sky, and they got there. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the original name. It was Indiana Jones and the butthole in the sky. <laughs> That's right. So, that movie's the sh- Welcome to the Video Homie Stories. I'm Sterling. I'm Morgan. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mo again. Um, and all right, fun stuff. So we're outside of Player's Choice at the Carolina. No, what's the name of this mall? Uh, this mall has gone through. A, it's like Prince. It's now just a sign. Just, <laughs> <laughs> the mall exists in your in your mind. It it's is the, a it's symbol. It's the deadest mall that still has a heartbeat. Yeah, it's really dope. Actually, it's got a lot of cool stuff. Hold on. Can, can I hit this button real quick? Yeah. Oh wait, that one doesn't do it. I thought I was gonna flip the camera. Oh, no, it doesn't flip during the during, recording. Damn. But I was thinking we could take some B-roll or something we leave okay. since All it's right. not live. Just wanted um, to show some people what, uh, what, what this dead mall This is. dead mall looks like this. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So there, uh, there is a train place down there. But what does closed. a train place mean? Uh, like some guy like had those old Lionel trains, and around Christmas time he'll set up and create a winter wonderland. You can go check that out. They put a gym right here. This used to be in a country west store. Tore down a Kmart and put down a Bass Pro Shop. It's the last living thing in this mall. And then, uh, we got a whole bunch of nothing. I can't even remember what that store used to be. Rack Room Shoes, maybe? This was a Dead Bath and Beyond. Dead Bath and Beyond? <laughs> <laughs> now they got some kind of thing in here. This was, uh, I don't even know. What was it? This was structure and express. And now it's here. There's a murder cafe. Alright, what else we got? The player's choice, which is this place is really dope. It's like the only thing alive in here. It's really it's cool stuff. Of That's a jump cut. <laughs> We're gonna put a jump cut That's for right. something that we'll do. Alright, right, now can you move over a little bit closer to me? Oh. Or do all and that. Kick that stuff. works. <laughs> All right, let's see. You just never, you're never close enough to me, Morgan. All right, here we go. I want somebody to roll up and be like, I always thought that about you too. I always thought you too. All right, maybe not that close. Here we go. Well, you said. I know a little bit. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, remember we got to talk loud. Loud and, and incredibly close. Today, uh, uh, Video Homie Stories, I'm going to put anything I normally say just on the bottom. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to edit this. Uh, hey, I'm Sterling. Uh, I do stand-up comedy and late-night jokes <laughs> on my YouTube. There's shorts uh, every day, except for not really this week, but still there's shorts every day uh, and comedy every week or late-night um, monologues every week. This is my homie uh, Morgan. We've been homies for a long time. Morgan used to work at this mall. I did. Uh, tell me about your time working at the Briarcliff Mall, Mall of mm, Carolina. This is full circle. What's it called now? The name uh, is I don't even know. I want to say it's called Myrtle Beach Mall. Myrtle Beach Mall. Yeah, yeah Myrtle Beach Mall now. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It was a. Uh, it was, used to be a lot more fun than this mall is now. I no. worked in the movie theater for years, and I mean, I don't know. We're here to talk about Indiana Jones. We never watched. Oh wait, did we see Crystal Skull together? Yeah, we saw Crystal Skull together. We were both disappointed. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I was so disappointed. You know, my yeah. problem with Crystal Skull, I thought about, is that it was actually kind of more like. Um, it just felt so cheesy that the... And remember, this is spoilers. We're video homie spoilers also. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was just all like... The reveal being aliens, I thought was so stupid. And I just thought it just didn't line up. But I guess... How do you think it lines up? Because all the other stuff was, you know, kind of... Well, two were like Christian, you know, things, yeah. themes from the Bible. And then... Or one's Hebrew and, you know, one's Christian. And then one was... Was it totally made up? The second one with the Temple of Doom? Is there any, like... Reality um, is there any parallel to real religious stuff in Temple of Doom? I mean, I'm sure there is, right? Because they, they didn't pull from anything, right? Everything that they pulled from some sort of history, even if they've altered it somewhat. I mean, just how you do doing, that. brother? Uh, podcast, yeah, absolutely. Have a good one, brother. But yeah, um, yo, I think that guy was the mayor. I think, I think that's the mayor. Like, he used to be the mayor for a long time in Myrtle Beach. I'm pretty sure that's uh, okay. uh, Mark Mark something. I think he used to be the mayor of Myrtle Beach. This place is so weird. I don't want to I don't talk to trash through the mall so bad because, like, the owner of this store was cool enough to let us film outside of here. Yeah, he's keeping the place alive single-handedly. 
but like outside of his store, bro, this place is, we're definitely going to, this video is going to change from a podcast to us walking around looking at the mall. This needs to be a haunted house. This yeah. place needs to be a haunted house. No, it doesn't need around. to be, Morgan. They just need to charge tickets for it because it, right. <laughs> it is now. It is now. All right, cool. And remember, we got a, a project or whatever. All right, so Crystal Skull, it was aliens. Everything else seemed religious. Crystal Skull, aliens. I was like, uh. And then in retrospect, I was thinking, well, I mean, I guess it's still kind of like supernatural. There's a supernatural thing. Right. What do you think about Crystal Skull being the reveal being aliens? I mean, I didn't like it. I like it more now that I saw this one. I kind of think that too. You know, like yeah, after yeah. I've seen this one, the uh, the way it lines up is kind of perfect. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because um, you always have to have Indiana Jones find something weird. And this one was basically a time machine. Yeah, it was a time <laughs> The dial of destiny. No infinity stones. But yeah. I mean, he was... But yeah. I mean, yep, they went through right in the butthole in the sky and they got there. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the original name. It was Indiana Jones and the butthole in the sky. That's right. So, that movie's the sh**. No. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, Morgan. All right. So uh, so Crystal Skull, I thought was lame, but in retrospect, when I was watching them all together, I was like, maybe it's not as bad as I it's remember. It's not as bad as we thought, but I mean, I think we were just disappointed because it was the year. It was that was the year Transformers and all the CGI movies, and Indiana Jones four was a yeah. big CGI movie. Yeah. More so than this one. Even though this one, the whole first act was co basically completely CG. Yeah, that opening sequence, whatever, was yep. very CG, is very not... Um, it was what do you think about that CG in the Dial of Destiny in the opening sequence? That was hard to watch. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was... Because um, some of it looked really good, but then some of it, uh, like, you're like, oh, cool, I'm looking at dead-eyed Indiana Jones. <laughs> it's not my, a real person. My problem with the de-aging the opening sequence of Dial of Destiny is um, they didn't... They, they didn't do his voice. Like, his voice was still, like, Harrison Ford nowadays. <laughs> yeah. He didn't used to sound like that. So I wish if they'd have, like, de-aged him. I wish they'd have had just someone who could do his voice or AI's voice or something. Because yeah. he's still got that, um, you know, voice. Yeah, he did. <clears throat> and then when he's running on the train, that's the worst. Like, that's like uh, Battle for Wakanda bad. Uh, see, you ever seen the CGI? It wasn't finished. That's, now I realize. I didn't know at the time. But, um. Killmonger and, and Black Panther uh, at the end of the yeah. first Black Panther. Like, they, they're fighting. That is the worst CGI. But I haven't seen a lot of it. Well, it's come out recently. Like, it wasn't even finished by the time they went. This is, like, that level of bad. When Indy's running on top of his train. It was like it was, when, you're, um, when you're a video game and a character and it keeps falling down. Yeah. And, and trying to get back up. That's what it looked like. The CG in the opening sequence of this is, like, the best video game from 2006. Like, it's the best PlayStation game PlayStation, uh, what did they have, three back then yet? No, oh, PlayStation man. 2. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's CGI. So we're talking Dial of Destiny, the latest Indiana Jones. Uh, I watched most of them and some recaps uh, before we watched it, because I hadn't seen Indiana Jones in a lot of years. Uh, what did you do in preparation for this movie? Uh, nothing, because I've seen so <laughs> many I've seen so many of them so many times. Mm -hmm. Crystal Skull is the, last, uh, the one I've seen the least, but I've Same. given that a rewatch in the past two or three years. Um, well, it's cool that Miriam comes back in that one. I didn't realize that. And, yeah. and then I was like, oh, on this rewatch, I yeah. realized that. That's, that's, I mean, it's got some cool stuff that I kind of did not appreciate yeah. at the time. It didn't, but I mean, I don't know. I didn't like that they killed Shia LaBeouf in this one like that. They were like, yeah, he enlisted. Killed yeah. himself. He killed himself, right. And I was like, all right, that's rough. Yeah, that's, you know, that's Shia like, LaBeouf. Just, just write him on off. You know, yep. can't say that he's having his own adventures and being his oh, own person. Oh yeah, exactly. He can't have a life. Maybe he's on some ops. Maybe <laughs> you know? he's on some ops, bro. Um, we should come up with segments to do with this, like you've tried to talk about before yeah. with this podcast. We have not come up with segments yet. We should come up with, like, uh, we should each do one. Like, you should be in charge of one that you bring to the table, and then I should bring charge of one that, like, you ever listen to the Office Ladies? Yeah. Can we be more like office ladies? Office ladies? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, so you have a sequence. I have a sequence. But, um, so, all right, we didn't talk about outline. Where do you want to start with this? We already mentioned the opening sequence a little bit. Where do you want to go from here? Well, I mean, let's just get into it. Uh, let's see. So, like, through the beginning of the movie, you find out Indiana Jones has an old friend, you know, that we haven't met before. Um, Shaw, Basil Shaw was his name. And... He was basically like Indiana Jones' other character, other sidekick characters in other movies. That's all his role was, helping him yeah. find stuff. And his goddaughter 
30 years later is the one that is Indiana Jones in this movie. <laughs> Let's be yeah, real. Phoebe yeah, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she was Indiana Jones. Which I can't wait to talk about her. I'm going to tell you good stuff about her. But yeah, it was more like a her film. Like it was just yeah, an indie type of thing. It was weird watching Indiana Jones uh, riding the side of a motorcycle instead of riding a motorcycle. The motorcycle. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, it was like you call it an Indiana Jones movie, but he's a side character, you know? Almost. Like, yeah, he's I almost really like a side he, character. Yeah, I felt like he was a side character for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, she did a great job as an actress, but I, for me as a story, it's about Indiana Jones. They had all the aspects of the story there, except for Indiana Jones himself, yeah. of doing stuff. And I don't need him to do the craziest stuff. Right. I need a stuntman to act like they're doing it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just, I don't know, swing from a vine. Something. something. <laughs> anything. <laughs> You know, yeah. th- this movie almost could have been called Indy. Indy goes and takes a nap and comes up and like finds some <laughs> uh, finds some stuff out. Uh, yeah, Indy. <laughs> that was the other subtitle. But on the sky, or Indy takes a nap and wakes up to find some stuff out. There <laughs> yeah. you go. There's our, we can name movies for you, Hollywood. If you're ever wondering, bro, right. we got to. We name these movies. Butthole in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I love. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, that is definitely gonna be the title of this episode. <laughs> it definitely has to be. Butthole in the sky. sky. There you go. I love it. Um, all right. So. I mean, I wasn't even. That's not. I actually think that was the, my favorite part of the movie. Was the butthole in the sky. I've right? always thought that about you, Morgan. <laughs> no. We haven't talked too in depth about these kind of personal things, but if I had to guess, I was like, maybe he's a butthole in the sky kind of guy. I mean, you know, I guess it's you know better than the alternative. I don't know what the alternative would be. The but butthole in the in ocean. The <laughs> you don't want to be in the ocean butthole. <laughs> That's oh, true. man, I love passerbys being like, ocean butthole? What is oh, it? My God. All right, so. But this uh, this movie itself was weird because like, I felt like Indiana Jones didn't have a lot of the uh, stuff that was, he didn't have a lot of the knowledge. Yeah. You know, like she's she was withholding a lot of knowledge, her character. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what is her name? name? Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the actress. What's the character's name? I just remember him calling her Shaw. Or like, he called her what, Shaw? Was it Abigail Shaw or something like that? I don't know. I we don't, don't remember. know this person's name. Her, name. her last name is Shaw. I remember that much. Shaw. All right, so we will refer to her as Shaw. But Shank? For real. Anyway, Shaw. <laughs> she, um... I man, I thought Phoebe Waller Bridge. I've never seen her in an action role, and I'm not. She might have been in an action role. I know her that she's in the show Fleabag, and I know that she's been in some other stuff, but I never seen her in an action role. I thought she did outstanding. No, she I was, was fantastic. super impressed with it. I thought it was awesome. The other thing I thought that was interesting about it was, dude, watching these movies from the '80s in, in nowadays lenses is so interesting because, like. I didn't realize how sexist the movies and stuff were. Like, I just I grew up with it. You know what I mean? Like, in the 80s, I was a little baby. You know what I mean? I was a kid. So, they, they're so sexist, though. I didn't realize that, they, like, like, women are side characters where they don't have a lot to do, you know? Yeah. Nowadays, it's kind of compensating almost to where it's like, it's kind of feels forced nowadays. And that, and, and, you know, but when the story makes sense for it, you know, I, I love it. I, I support, uh, you know, women can do most everything that, you know, that a man could do, like, there's only certain things that women can't do that men can do, and there's certain things men can't do that women can do. But, I mean, essentially, like, most of the stuff for the plot of a movie, any person can do, essentially. But uh, I felt like it was so sexist for back in the day, how they treated women. There were side characters that were told what to do kind of stuff. Uh, they were always getting rescued, you know what I mean? In this one, it was great to see, like, well, that's not the case anymore. You know, Phoebe Waller-Bridge and the FBI, CIA agent lady or whatever, yeah. like, they just seem to be strong women in this. I thought that was great, and it didn't feel too forced. Maybe the CIA characters, I forgot her name. Remember that girl with the afro? Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. yeah. I, her character might have been a little bit forced, but it was still uh, it was still good. It like, was it was solid. Some, you had to have a cop. You had you to know, have a so cop. So you might as well, like, you know, make that cop that kind of person. I don't know. Maybe she felt forced. I don't know what about her felt forced, but it didn't. Her acting a little at bit, times. Maybe, but, but okay. she was, uh, I mean, she was still dope. And the... Uh, the plot. The movie's got some plot I'm gonna, holes. I'm going to sound very sexist right now. Yeah, uh, I know I am. But I was reading an article the other day, and it was talking about um, what what brought about the women's revolution. And <laughs> that's all you, bro. What are you talking about? It was all the right. invention of the washing machine. So the once invention. washing once washing machines got in everybody's house, they yeah. had so much more time to do all the other things, you know, because washing clothes for a big family. There's a lot. All day. Back and in cooking the day. and all that stuff. Yeah. And the invention of that just 
like let them be able to do more and this movie is set in 1969 so people have had washing machines for a while yeah <laughs> so now they're up in the world and doing stuff you know what's interesting we talk about those washing machines no one hidden a washing machine to get out of an explosion in this uh, movie yeah. nope nope wait that was uh, a fridge i know but it was an appliance oh, okay. i'm just trying to do the appliance <laughs> We turned the air off in this uh, mall, bro. Man, this they is, did. They ain't had air in this mall, bro. Um, uh, yeah, man, but it, I thought it was dope to see both those characters, though, the, the CIA agent and uh, Fee Waller Bridge. Fee Waller Bridge, though, I didn't feel forced. I feel like, to me, I feel like it was, no, I thought she was, was a, a great part character. of the story. It's a goddaughter, knows Indy. Um, you know, felt like they knew each other. That didn't yeah. feel fake. Yep, I thought it was good. Uh, later on at the end of the movie, one of my favorite scenes involves her and him. Um, I thought it was a great, uh, great thing. Um, which I guess I'll say it. we're not t- talking things in order, but when they're in the past. And, oh, yeah. And he's just giving a monologue about how he's going to stay, and she just knocks him out to take him back. Yeah. I was like, I, did you think that was cheesy, or did you like it? Um, the only reason why I didn't like it is because that's not an Indiana Jones thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Indiana Jones didn't get to decide to come back or what to do, or I don't know. He was kind of forced there. So I'm like, great, Indiana Jones didn't make the final decision in the Indiana Jones movie. But, yeah. I mean, I guess his dad kind of took a bullet for him in Last Crusade. So, yeah. you know, that kind of also happened there. Um, I just didn't like how suddenly you were back. Like, I was like, I, I wanted to see them go back. What like, do you mean? Like, okay, we saw them get there. Oh, 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 all of a sudden now we cut I wanted to, to the see end. Them, yeah. I wanted to see them come back. Yeah. I think that's my only beef with it. You can punch him, knock him out, cool, to bring him back. Yeah. But, like, I want to see them on the plane ride again. I want to see the butthole in the sky. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> see it. There wasn't enough butthole in the sky time. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I thought that, uh, yeah, that, so jumping to the end of the movie, when she punched him, knocks him out, I thought it was a good sequence. I, I, go, I also agree, like, there could have been more story there. There could have been more of an adventure back. There could have been yeah. something, but there wasn't. He just woke up. Uh, which is convenient writing. Look how great that works out for the yeah, story. And um, <laughs> which was, it felt like that a few times. It felt like it. I felt like if um, they might have asked AI to write them an Indiana Jones script. No, I had to get on you. Know, I had to disagree there because Indiana Jones, all these ones that we write, we're watching, they are full of convenient writing. Like there's, there happens to be a limb that's. 40 foot long from this one tree that'll get you into the water. There happens to be a whip up here. There happens, there's always, if you go walk, back and watch the Indiana Jones movies, to the top right of Indy, there always happens to be something and, right and, here he can grab to help him out. Whatever, well, it's like, know, oh. And this one, wasn't it like he's underwater with the water snakes, the eels, which I yeah. thought was a good one, because then he's always been afraid of snakes. He's been afraid of snakes. So and they, they got brought in the eels. eels, but then like he had the, um, the life that preserver. Thing? Yeah. So what helped him? Just that the fact that you can pull that yeah, or whatever. Pull that, bam. To um, the top. Yeah, there was. Uh, was there a character that died? Fi- like uh, real Antonio quick in Banderas here? did. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, that was his I, friend. I, I love Antonio Banderas' <laughs> character. I thought it was gonna be awesome. He had like one. He had like one line that I thought was cute. Or yeah, cool. yeah. He had a funny line. He had a funny line, and that's. <laughs> thank you, Antonio, for your service <laughs> yeah. today. And your maybe ten to fifteen minutes of screen time in this if, movie, if yeah. even. So, yeah, he had one line and... My uh, friend was murdered. I mean, that was kind of cold. She just left and he's like, hey, yo, wait a minute. My friend just got killed. Could you not? Could you not? Yeah, <laughs> it was not. That was not my favorite. But there's, I saw another movie like that recently where they just like, boop, person's dead. Um, yeah, so I, I don't like know. the Egyptian short round in this movie. The Egyptian kid. Well, he's basically a short Bennett. round. He's yeah. basically short round. Uh, I agree with that. Um, I, think they, I think they got him from Egypt. Yeah, I think that's where Indiana Jones found Shaw or met up with Shaw, and then he was a yeah. little pickpocket kid. He had a lot of funny scenes. He didn't. I thought he played it well because he seemed. Um, he still seemed like a dumb kid, not dumb, but like I'm immature, old man. Immature, he seemed like a punk kid. Everything. You know what I mean? And he, but I thought he played it really well. Like he did a good job being a punk kid. You know. Um, but uh, so I thought that was pretty good. I liked his character a lot. Um, I like Phoebe's character a lot. The villain in this movie. What do we think about the villain in this the movie? Villain. The villain in this movie goes up right up with the ones in the in the third one. Yeah. In the first one. Yeah. You know, like very good. Mm-hmm. You know, especially because who does Indiana Jones hate more than anybody? Nazis. The Nazis. When I saw that, I was like, bro, are we going back to the Nazi well, bro? Um, but I mean, whatever. Because we're in the '60s and we're still talking about Nazis, you know? Yep. But Indiana. Very Hydra feel. Not gonna yeah. lie, dude. I thought maybe they're gonna do a crossover at some point. A couple of times, I was like, "This feels like the beginning of Captain America." A few, a few times in this, which 
a side note on the series, I saw, I saw, um, I watched Temple of Doom, no, Last Crusade for the first time in 20 years, probably, yesterday, uh, recently. And, dude, it feels, I mean, it just feels so much like a Star Wars movie. And it's got all the same people behind the scenes, essentially, like so many same people. And it feels like it. It's like the desert, the jungle, wilderness. It feels like a Star Wars movie without the spaceships. What do you think about Indiana Jones, the parallels between that and a Star Wars film? What do you think? I mean, they're pretty much kind of all are. They're uh, like, I want to say the original Star Wars was written after Seven Samurai, which is a black and white samurai movie. Yeah. You know, and samurai movies and cowboy movies. Mm-hmm. Though, like, if any hero trope like through storytelling yeah you could make it any movie I mean I could write you a char- I could write a movie about a cowboy that does all this stuff and change it to where he's a space cowboy all of a sudden yeah you know it's not that impossible. some people call me that yeah some call you the gangster love I'm just a <laughs> ah. the joker yeah um nobody calls you that <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. that's the song I know <laughs> just being honest um so this shirt obviously made from like five below. It's a cheap shirt, but it was obviously made in the two thousand late two thousands. But you get the eighties reference on it. Get a grin again and again. That's the Nicholson line. I'm sure Warner Brothers has no money for this shirt whatsoever. <laughs> this is so cheesy. None. Um, all right. So where are we in this? We should have like the stuff written out, like a timeline or something. Oh, we didn't. Uh, we did not. This is Dial of Destiny. Um, the I tried to dial it in and focus a few times, but I found my mind wandering during this film. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, what destiny would it did it land on? Um, me waking up from a nap. I did fall asleep. Did you fall asleep in the movie? Just barely. <laughs> and I caught myself. And then I was like, all right. It was whenever they were on the boat, I think, to get to the final thing. Yeah. You know, like, it was that third act just kind of dragged for me. Yeah, I don't remember so much. I thought it was good. I stayed the whole time. Had to pee, but I stayed. It was worth for me. I thought it was worth peeing. One I also else, saw it late. I saw it really. Oh, yeah. It was, it was like about 1 and a thir- 1.30 in the morning. So We got to go to a special preview because uh, somebody had a preview pass or whatever. So uh, it was really dope. Was, I, I thought the movie was good. As far as like new Hollywood movies, I put it up there with like any other kind of new thing that's coming out. Not Nothing incredible, but a good watch is what I thought about it overall. Also, I just want to say some of the uh, sequences in the Last Crusade. Oh, obviously that one. But uh, in the, what's the first one again? Uh, Raiders of the Lost. Raiders Ark. of the Lost. Ark. That's what I'm trying to say. Earlier I might have said Last Crusade. And I meant Raiders of the Lost. Ark. Anyway, some of those action sequences. I mean, that stuff still holds up. Like it's still very interesting. Like it's still yeah. like intriguing to watch. You're like what's gonna happen? What's going? There's a lot of that that goes on with this. I think. Um, how do you think that the other? How do you think the action sequences hold up in the older movies? They hold up better because. You can, with CG, you're immediately taken out of fearing this person's in danger. And yeah. You know you're watching the movie. Yeah. And, it, you know, and that suspension of disbelief that doesn't work. Disbelief. Disbelief. That suspension of disbelief doesn't work as well I when mean, there's a lot of CG. To me, the most, like, the one part of the movie that I had the most, uh, you know, edge of your seat moment was when they're in the ocean chasing all the eels and stuff. Yeah. That, like, even in the end, you know, when they're going to the plane, that yeah. didn't feel, you know, like they were, it didn't feel like a third act big thing, right. you know, it didn't feel like in the, like in the last crusade when you step on on stuff and throwing salt on the invisible bridge yeah, to yeah. get there, you know, it just felt like he was punching somebody to not go through somewhere and they went through anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and. I thought it was funny that they were trying to get back to 1939, and where did they end up? In like 14 or 15, like 69. It was yeah, 939 or something. Yeah, it was crazy. What? Who's the person from from history? They uh, saw? Archimedes. Archimedes. Yeah, yeah. Archimedes is dial. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was really cool. I mean, the fact that Archimedes had a watch, they explained that. I yeah. mean, it almost... The dragons had propellers. By the, yeah, by the time this was... Towards the end, I was like, this almost had a Bill and Ted feel to it. <laughs> oh, like, a little bit. Yeah, I know, can see that. I can definitely like, see I was, that. Because I was like, man, what if we, like, had met Napoleon in altered history, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. What, like, <laughs> well, I did think there would be more, like, history altering involved in it and stuff like that. I thought it would be... Um, Cause it was time travel, but like it wasn't. But it um, wasn't because it's already happened. 
because you yeah. know it already laid out it had already happened yeah which, the watch was already on the dude they were already going down that destiny i hate time travel in general like the thought of it just messes with me and then Endgame brought out um the thought of parallel universes the multiverse and you know everything exists on its own timeline and i was like oh well then i kind of i was like i guess that kind of that's something i could job with it makes kind of sense but there's been everything's about time travel right now bro like i'm can we not time travel anymore, bro? Can we just stay here? Like, I'm tired of time travel movies. I mean, so. I'm pretty sure Buddha said be present. <laughs> yeah, Buddha said be present. And we know that because we went back and talked to him. <laughs> That's right. And he licked our tongues. It was real yeah, weird. And he was rubbing his big old belly, and it was it was kind of awkward. It was kind of awkward. Um, That's the Dalai Lama. Is that a different religion? Oh, my gosh. Cancel Morgan. He's the one that said it. Um, Buddha, could have said, Buddha wouldn't mind. I don't even know Buddha... And the Dalai Lama in the same religion. Isn't that messed up? I took religious studies in college. Well, I mean, I um, I, I don't even... Buddhists and monks are... But there's Buddhist monks, so... Mm. You know what I mean? The Dalai Lama's a monk. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, there's Christian monks, too. I saw that. Um, you thought I was doing a setup there's for a, a joke. There's a, there's a TV show called Monk, too, with Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. Did he, they bring back a monk special for, like, a Peacock or yes, something? Yes, they did. Did yeah. you watch it? Yeah, I did. I never finished the first series, but I thought it was good, but I just never watched it. Like, Psych, I never watched that all the way through, but I, I like Psych. I just never watched it. What do you think of that? Um, Psych is better than Indiana Jones 4. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, do you remember how I was so ca- – I need a caffeine. You guys know me. I'm like, I need caffeine. And I drink so much caffeine, I'm a little dang, 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 jittery, but I'm also tired. I'm tired and jittery at the same time. So. Same. I feel like I need a nap. You want to nap on me? You can. No, it's okay. While we have a bunch of people walking by, just nap on me, dude. Just, just the napping I'm sure podcast. Weird things that have happened in this mall. Yeah, I know. It's not Deadpool. It's Sleepful. It's uh, what That's else right. is behind me? Uh, oh, I can't read them backwards. We, we got we got the Dollar Kids rides over there. We can get you on a little merry-go-round <laughs> here a little bit. There you go. Let's cut to that now. Um, <laughs> More than. Oh no, snap. Hey, buddy. The last thing I can do with this dead mall is <laughs> ride this thing for 50 cents. Uh, it's ridiculous. I'm having a good time, though, going nowhere fast. That's it. I, don't, I just can't really even think of too much from the movie because I was like, okay, disappointed. Not disappointed. I was like, all right, they're trying to make it an Indiana Jones movie. Okay, yeah. they're still trying. Okay. Yeah. I was like, ah, they got there. Ah, they lost me again. <laughs> I thought it was a good movie. I liked um, some stuff. I wish that Shia LaBeouf's character hadn't just been killed off the way it was killed off. I wish they stopped at Last Crusade. I agree with that statement. Although these two were decent, but I definitely think that Last Crusade was... I think Last Crusade is just a good movie in general. I don't think you, you don't have to be an Indiana Jones fan. You don't have to have seen the other ones. Yeah. You don't have to care about anyone's after it or whatever. That's a good movie by itself. If you've seen the other ones, it's, you know, definitely better. But uh, I think Last Crusade is just a good movie. Same thing, I think, with, like, Die Hard 3. Dude, like, Die Hard 3? Yeah, yeah. I think no. Die Hard 3 is a dope movie. I don't, it doesn't have to be a Die Hard movie, which you've told me why it doesn't have to be a Die Hard movie because it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. It was a movie called Simon Says based around another cop. Yeah, but they but that's the best that's the way to do a sequel to me is to like do just don't do a sequel do a separate movie yeah you know you don't have to do callbacks to the first one necessarily right I don't really understand like we enjoyed the character we don't need to enjoy I don't know that's no like, they need to that's our whole podcast what are we gonna do if, if Hollywood start doing original IP then I'd be proud of them <laughs> <laughs> I'd be proud of I them. love it I love it I love it because I mean this is wild to me I don't know like everything down to the last shot of this movie of it ending on a cartoon little clothes then I don't even remember this part oh yeah 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 you grab the hat and it's like yeah yeah and I'm like that's all folks and I was like it does feel like uh, that's all folks not for you? No, not for me. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. My favorite parts were probably a few Waller Bridge. I thought um, Harrison Ford did a great job. Um, it was still believable. I had a concern it wouldn't be that believable to me, but I still was following along. <laughs> Excuse me, I hated the CGI in the beginning, but it was also like for me, I could just push past it. I play a lot of video games. Um, 
So I thought it was pretty I dope. I took off my glasses for the first part of the movie so I could enjoy it. <laughs> there you go. If you're, if you're like me, real. <laughs> yeah, it looks almost real if you take off you Take glasses. off those glasses. I thought it was pretty decent. Well, I mean, like, let's see. So they have, normally have a few things in Indiana Jones movies. They have what they call the MacGuffin, which is the thing that they're after. Uh, or that they is think that, that a Hollywood term? Yeah, it's a Hollywood term. You it's know? called the Mi- what? The MacGuffin. MacGuffin. Uh, like uh, the Ark and Raiders of the Lost Ark was the MacGuffin. Like um, the the can't even remember the name of it in uh, the second one. Like the sphere type thing. Like with the yeah. Uh, well, aren't they after those stones? It's funny. The second one, they're after stones. Kind of like Infinity Stones. Right. But, but yeah. uh, and then they put it in the sphere, or whatever. And then the third one, the the Holy Grail. Yeah. But this one being the, the dial. Grail? Huh? Dr. Jones is on the grail. The grail? <laughs> He's searching for the grail now. <laughs> but I like I like the uh, the dial as the, the MacGuffin, MacGuffin or whatever. And then but then also <clears throat> every Indiana Jones movie he's um, he has a fear, he has an animal that he bites. Yeah. I always thought that was pretty good. Um, and the first one it's obviously snakes. I wanna say the second one it's bugs. The third one, it's rats. Rats. The fourth one was a weird choice. Ants. Yeah. But they yeah. they did it better this time. They went with uh, sea snakes. Sea eels. snakes. Yeah, exactly. So the eels are pretty scary in this movie. I'm going to wear my fanny pack. I keep dropping my fanny pack, so I'll just wear it up here. Checks out. I should wear it on my fanny. Anyway, eels are scary. What else? Uh, no, I mean, that was just, like, the only big comparisons from the Indiana Jones that I had. It's the three McGuffins and the three things. It's like, okay, they did that, they did that, they did this. There's a yeah. hat in each one of them. Yeah. Everybody's wearing a hat. I don't think he used the whip except for that one scene that was in the trailer. Oh, really? You know, he, like, used the whip once and then everybody pulled the gun on him. Yeah, I thought uh, that was a funny scene, though. That was a funny scene. Uh, and then the other thing was, like, you know, there's a, a, a arc, a trope, I don't know what you call it, a recurring thing they always come back to. You know, Indy's students, he's always been a professor, and his student, the girls are always, like, in doughy-eyed. Oh, and love him, yeah. And then, like, now he's 60s, yeah. 70s, and he's still a professor. Uh, Nobody's listening. And they're not listening to him. It's the 60s now. They're going to the moon. And this man has seen aliens. They don't care. Yeah. He's met the oldest man alive. That was in the crusade, right? Yeah, that guy crusade. met Jesus. Yeah. So he's been the old, yeah, this dude's seen so much stuff. He's seen the Ark of the Covenant. He's seen the five power stones or the, whatever they were called. In the, uh, and it all belongs in a museum. In a, yeah, everything, in, no matter case, what it is. Belongs in a museum. Yeah, that's right. It still had, to, still had to go back there and say that line. And it's not wrong. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Hey, when was it, did they, uh, <clears throat> you know how they had the Indiana Jones show? Yeah, the, young, the Is that the, the same Indiana actor Jones. from the opening sequence in Crusade? No, the okay. opening uh, actor from the opening sequence of Crusade was River Phoenix. River Phoenix, yeah, yeah. The actor in the TV show was Sean Patrick Flannery, who um, was who one of the brothers in Boondock Saints. Okay, wow. Yeah. Okay, wow. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, uh, all right, so they're, you know, but they're all on Disney right now. Um, this movie I thought was uh, overall, man. I thought it was good. It's nothing incredible. It if you miss good. it, it'll be fine. It just didn't need to happen. <laughs> I just don't understand. Like, I, yeah. I mean, James Mangold, you're a wonderful filmmaker, and you've, you've directed Wolverine, and you know you did this, and you've done fantastic movies. But you're turning the J.J. Abrams on me, and maybe Ow. I'm wrong for that. But. No. So speaking I just, about that, I mean, I can't say nothing. If somebody offered me to do a reboot of of my childhood movie tomorrow, I would do it in a heartbeat. What's uh, would you do a Back to the Future movie? Nah, man, it's gonna be ET and Short Circuit. They meet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's like the same. They got the same head and everything. Yeah, it's about. That's right. Short. You remember they had that horror movie that looked like Short Circuit? No. There was a horror movie. You know how we talk about in the Chippendales episode, we talk yeah. about the knockoff cartoons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had one of those straight to video like horror movies, and the villains were basically short circuit robots. It's like they had to get the robots, and they just changed the eyes, but it was the short circuit robot. Kind of like, you know how they had villains in yeah. this number two or something? It was like that, except they did like two other changes to the front part of it to make them more menacing, but they're bad guys. Like, it's a scary movie. Oh, man, I got to watch it. It's the short circuit robots. I don't know. Or now, Truthfully, that was just the cover of the movie. I never watched it. So it might be, it might not have nothing to do with it. That's just how they marketed it. That's true. The 80s were weird. The 80s were weird. It was an 80s or 90s movie, but um, 
All right, so there's actually people in this mall. What's happening? People are showing up to the mall. Like, yeah, what's going they want on? to walk around in air conditioning because it's 115 degrees outside, yeah, and that has and to stop. By air conditioning, we mean ish. <laughs> ish. It is uh, it's, a little toasty. The air conditioning is 40 percent other people's hot breath breathing <clears> through <throat> in this mall. <laughs> yeah, and normally it's 45. So, That's right. It's a good day. It's a good day. Um, what is the Dreamhouse Theater? I'm looking at a thing. It looks like a murder mystery thing, maybe? Yeah. They yeah, got we're... murder mystery things in this mall. This is a flea market mall. If you no. have anything that you want to sell on a flea market, come to the Myrtle Beach Mall. Dude, we, this is the hood mall, bro. I this could is probably very... get you a space in here. This is not in the hood, but I'm saying this is a knockoff mall, bro. I'll sell you a space right now. Yeah, what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, I was going you know, it's going to cost you a Happy Meal to get in here. <laughs> exactly. That's about it. With one extra nugget, bro. I need at least one extra nugget. Uh, all right, so this is a funny mall. We're going to go around it. I feel like that guy was like the mall owner, bro. Just says a guy walking the his dog. Oh, yeah, he very well could be. I feel like that's Mark McBride, who used to be the mayor of Myrtle Beach and who's had... Anyway. He just remembered the glory days. I mean, I feel like it, bro. He remembers when this mall had a pet store before people thought that was bad to do that to animals the ship woman sell them the people like they were oh you would buy animals in this mall yeah they had like wow. yeah exotics no I or mean, like dogs like, like puppy mill action that doesn't happen anymore you know what i mean like they would wow. be like here's a golden retriever and here's this and you know like, and, <laughs> you like, should sell stuff in the 90s here's this <laughs> oh, you did a good job do you have a good goofy you got a good goofy don't you <laughs> <laughs> fantastic bro alright so uh, let's see we saw this uh, I keep trying to get back to it uh, movies alright didn't need to happen I don't know I mean uh, it was entertaining <clears throat> yeah I think I think if I caught this on my couch and it was on TV and I was like okay that wasn't as bad yeah I think the fact that I paid $15 at 11 at night nope I got it for free, so I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can judge it by that, but I will say that I had a good time at the movie. It was one of the better times I've had at a movie lately. Um, it, not incredible, but not nearly as. Okay. I it's would just, go see it because there's just not a lot of great things well, it's, out. It's, it's got a six point nine on IMDb. I'd yeah. probably give it a solid six, and that's just because Crystal Skulls had a four for me. Oh, you know? Crystal Skulls. I mean, Crystal Skulls a little higher for me than it was before, yeah. but I would say it was a three before. It's probably a four now. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I hated it before. Now I really appreciate. So this one, like some of the stuff, as much as I'm crapping on it, and I know I'm sounds like I'm crapping on it because I'm kind of crapping on it. There is so much enjoyable stuff. Yeah. It's just the unenjoyable stuff took me out of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I wonder this whole time I could have brought that a little closer. Oh well. Um, see if you can hear me now. But I thought it was pretty dope. It was uh, definitely worth it um, to see. Also, if you don't see it and you just get it on Disney Plus in a couple months, that's fine too. But if you're an indie fan, uh, I would I would see it because it's out there. And if you don't see it, if you watch it, I think it's not going to be terrible. You're not going to be you're not going to leave it mad. But if you don't watch it, you're not missing much. But like, I don't know. Indiana Jones helped her figure out some stuff and all that. But I ultimately feel like, uh, even though Indiana Jones followed her and like tracked her down and stuff, I feel like it was somebody that took Indiana Jones out of the old folks' home. And was like, we're going to the park today, Grandpa. Yeah. And it's like, we're going to have an adventure. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, and that was like one of the last big days he had. They yeah. Did, they got some ice cream. They fed the ducks. That's very much home. what this movie feels like. But is that kind of what it is? I mean, because Harrison Ford's Howard in real life. You know, 80. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the deal. I yeah, mean, it, you know, he's at the feed the duck stage. You got to pass the torch at some point. Um, unless you're Al Pacino, you can still pop out babies. <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, you got to pass the torch at some point, and I and, feel like... But, man, maybe don't punch 80-year-old men in the face to knock them unconscious to bring them back to the present. Yeah, if you think about it like that, that was horrible. <laughs> That's kind of a terrible thing to do. Elder abuse. And, and right, It wasn't there. elder abuse because it happened 9,000 years ago. No, exactly, exactly. So it didn't even matter. They were going to get in their propeller dragon and get away. That's they right. don't care. Uh, I love that they could, could communicate using Spanish. They're, like, weren't they using, like, old Spanish? Like, Latin. Spain? Latin. That's what I said. Latin checks out. Though. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, it makes sense if you speak, you know, understand some Latin. Um, yeah, pretty dope. It was, My grandfather uh, spoke Latin. I don't think anybody does anymore. But uh, he Your got grandfather a, spoke Latin? He got a master's degree in horticulture and oh, wow. um, graduated from the University of Kentucky in 1924 wow. and, got, and spoke Latin. So, like, when I was a kid, I had to go around and he was Indiana Jones of trees. 
my grandpa. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Like, the Indiana Jones of trees. Like, I mean, he I could, know a couple people that are. He could Indiana point Jones at a tree trees. and tell you like Everything what it, it was, yeah. where it came from in the world, the species. I had a project where I had to pick leaves and just write down the name. Yeah. I wrote down the Latin name and the origin of where it got. I got 150 on Oh, heck project. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because I, I, I taught the teacher oh, something. Horticulture. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> awesome. Man. My, uh, so that was in Kentucky. So right above that in the little southeast Ohio, I had an uncle who was also a horticulture expert who um, – he grew a certain kind of crop that the ATF was not very fond of. And he had hundreds and hundreds of acres Did of this crop. Did he speak Latin or Spanish? <laughs> he spoke green, bro. Okay. He sowed and, and made green. He, he sowed bear green day. and made some green. Bear day. Yeah, bear, bear day, day is what he spoke. Uh, de Nero. He spoke <laughs> De Nero and, and herbs. Uh, but he... Uh, but he old now, so he ain't out there breaking bad. He's just trying not to break a hip. You know what I mean? He not. He, <laughs> um, was he really doing that before? I don't think so. No, it was never, it never happened. Never, probably legal now. Who knows? But ATF stopped it, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, gosh, it was a crazy story. We got out of it. It's a, uh, not for the podcast. Um, <laughs> anyway, though, also, um, I just call him my uncle. That's a, yeah. Uh, all right, so fun stuff. And uh, this movie, Morgan, how many VHSs would you give? And by the way, things I want to say about the movie Feed Waller Bridge, I think great acting overall pretty good movie the villain the guy who's the villain what's his uh, name Mar- actor like Mars I like that Mars dude then, everything I he's in he's a good actor makes you feel a little bit on your edge of your seat you can also pull for him a little bit he's got he's a great actor uh, I like that guy I like Phoebe Waller Bridge a lot um, some plot holes in the movie I didn't like but again these movies just kind of have those um, I'm trying to think of anything in the on the back the CGI in the beginning was terrible but it was still it Good wasn't as bad movie. as all the CGI throughout number four. There you go. Well, I don't remember how bad the CGI in four was, but um, I mean, no, it was like 13 years ago, right? Yeah, but like the ants. I just remember the CGI ants. Like, mm. I was like, mm. um, so yeah. All right, what? Uh, do you have any final recaps you no, want to I say mean, about yeah, the how movie? Many, how many VHS tapes? Uh, yeah, three and a whip crack. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to give it, um, yeah, I'll give it three and a half. I'm going to give it three and a half VHSs and a, a, a punch in the 80-year-old face is what I'm going to give That's it. So right. three and a half whip cracks and a Stop punch living in, the past, old in man. your grandpa's face. Exactly. Um, still my favorite part of the movie. So uh, this guy's checking out this video game right here behind us. I'm totally not going to get it. All right, never mind. It's sold, um, man. It says sold. sold. It says sold. It's sold on it. You want the Simpsons Bowl? Um, you can buy that online for $75. Player one up. At player, oh, wait. Well, don't. <laughs> I was about to think. No, that's not this That's not this store. I right? know. I was about to think the owner of this store, and you tell them where they can find the stuff online. <laughs> uh, anyway. Well, uh, player's choice is where you want it. If you're in Myrtle Beach and you don't, and you want to see a haunted house that you can walk into for free, come to the Myrtle Beach Mall. But if you are here, there's like two things here. And one of them is a store called Player Choice. All the dopest stuff behind us. They're really nice, let us film outside of it. So thank you for Player Choice, Player's Choice, uh, new and used games, comics, and uh, a lot of cool stuff inside there. They had an Indiana- T-shirts, all kinds of stuff. Had an Indiana Jones poster, which would have been dope to put right here, but we put um, Deadpool and some other stuff. Mm. There's Venom. There's a Bart Simpson video game. What's behind me on this side? There's a oh, something yeah. you playing. Oh, got a Switch. Animal Crossing on Switch looks like. Animal it. Crossing. That is appropriate. But yeah. Um, if you ever want to walk into a mall and feel your grandparents and parents' dreams that are already dead. That are dead. This mm, is the place. This is the place. All right, bro. So uh, thank you so much for. Let's just. We're going to do some cut scenes maybe. But Maybe. right now, we are going to thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, we have uh, funny content all the time on this channel. It's my channel, Ham Sterling. Uh, funny content all the time. It's uh, what I do, funny shorts every day and stand-up comedy or late-night comedy every week. By late-night, I write a little monologue and I do late-night at an open mic, which is like the perfect audience for late-night. It's not. Uh, but we try to make it work anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's all the stuff. And then uh, pretty much every week, uh, we do this podcast. Uh, typically, it's live. Um, and this is my buddy Morgan, and uh, we like movies. We're talking about movies. This is Video Home yeah, Stories. Yeah, yeah. Thanks absolutely. for watching. All right, Morgan, click. Uh, tell them to click to something. Tell them to click here to laugh at something. Uh, something. Click anywhere to laugh at stuff. We got some funny stuff, too. Look at the shorts that we make. They're funny. There you go. I'll put, some, I'll put one of those funny shorts right here. 
I'll put another episode of the podcast right here. And then I'll put uh, stand up over there and subscribe here. Bye. <laughs>